Don't believe the power of the Olympics? Think of Barcelona. What did you know of that city before 1992? That awareness soon turns into travel dollars. Or Atlanta. At least you've now heard of the city. By 96, you'll be swamped with it. And if you've heard of it, so too have business people and investors. Come 2000, that money could be Sydney's. We're talking something of the order of a 13, 14 billion dollar economic benefit, billion dollar economic benefit. It's wall to wall global TV advertising for Sydney and Australia. It's an extraordinary opportunity that comes once, probably only every hundred years. It's all too good to be true. So who better to ask about the realities of the Olympic dream than the Spanish? Well, I think we have a kind of feeling of sadness because the things, these things went out. But I just uh, believe that the people of Barcelona are very happy to have had the games. The party is over now for Barcelona. The guests are gone. The house cleaning has begun. So too has the housekeeping. At the Olympic offices, they're predicting a small profit, around $5 million, but that's just from actual running of the games. The tangible benefits of hosting the Olympics are there to be seen and enjoyed. Barcelona now boasts some of the world's best sporting venues. Although the crowd numbers aren't always setting records, the city asserts the facilities, running on a commercial basis, are returning dividends. Some are in use every day. Others, though, only get a workout for big events. Still, the tourists are coming to see them. Months after the games ended, here to touch the city they became so familiar with on their television screens. Business leaders see the benefits of the games as tangible and immediate. They believe the one and a half billion dollars it's spent is a solid investment in the future, paying off now. Traffic congestion in Barcelona, one of Europe's most densely populated cities, is said to have been cut by 15 to 20 percent by the new roads. But it's the intangibles, like community spirit, that the mayor sees as the real return to his city. You see the city mobilizing itself in a way that uh, it probably would be impossible to, to, to foresee without the games. No one wants to talk of negatives, like the new villages where sales aren't spectacular. At the still-closed Olympic Village, it's said 60% of units are sold. But until owners move in next January, it's not possible to gauge how successful the new suburbs will be. Certainly all hasn't gone well. The gleaming beachfront tower hotel is boarded up. Its owners and builders bust. There is a price and Barcelona is paying for staging the Olympic Games. All the spending brought inflation. It's higher here than the rest of Spain, higher than the European average. Some say housing costs went up 400% in just eight years. 80,000 jobs were generated by the Olympics over eight years. Now many of those involved can't find work in a recession. But in the avenues, bars and cafes of Barcelona, the broad view is that it was all worthwhile. It was a great time. time. It was uh, the best time I have uh, had in Barcelona. It was like a party for a less, every single day. Economical situation now is very bad, but I think that's nothing to do with the Olympic Games. In the short twilight since the Games, Barcelona's memories remain nothing but the best. Beneath the Olympic Games pageantry, there's meticulous planning something for which Sydney is well prepared. Sydney plans to use 1,100 buses, 250 minibuses and 1,600 cars. And that's for the athletes and officials. For spectators, the numbers are huge. I think we're looking at, on the peak day, something about 350,000 people. A train station will be built just next to the main stadium. We would have uh, very long trains of about 12 carriages departing about every three minutes and going into Central. On top of that, there'll be ferries and buses shifting a total of 50,000 people an hour. There'll be five Olympic sports at Darling Harbour. Basketball at the Entertainment Centre, 
weightlifting at the convention center, and in the exhibition halls, judo, table tennis, and boxing. Sydney's well placed for accommodation. We already have more hotel rooms than Barcelona did for the 92 Olympics. And unlike Barcelona, the room rates will be pegged to prevent $1,000 a night rip-offs. For the athletes, an Olympic village at Homebush designed for the athletes. Well, athletes don't like to walk very far, so we've been what, told. <laughs> so we've been told, <laughs> unless they're in the walking event. Well, uh, and they also were concerned that they needed somewhere that was quiet and reflective before they competed, and somewhere that was much more festive and party-like after they'd finished competing. So the, the solution? A low-rise village, giving them the best of the Aussie way of life. The Australians enjoy an outdoor lifestyle, so everybody whose apartment or house is on the ground, they get a private yard. And then the people who live on the upper floors who enjoy better views and more sunshine, well, they get a large roof terrace or a big court, a big um, balcony. They can train in these shared backyards or they can go down to uh, enjoy the amenity of the park where there are swimming pools, tennis courts, basketball courts, cycling tracks, running tracks, gyms, there'll be discos, alcohol-free bars, there'll be outdoor eating area, the games will be held at the end of September, so the climate will be terrific, basically. Um, and they can really enjoy the Sydney lifestyle that we also enjoy. Hopefully all the best aspects of it. So we think they'll have a good time. After the Olympics, the three bedroom houses will be sold to the public for between $140,000 and $180,000. That's if the athletes haven't bought them. Well, of course, we had they'll never go home. I mean, there's no reason to once they've been in this village with the splendid views to Homebush Bay in the city and they've enjoyed our lifestyle and caught the ferry to the city. Why would they want to go back to their country? I mean. A new indoor velodrome at Sydney Olympic Park will host the track cycling events. At Eastern Creek and down the F4, the 100km team time trial. Most spectacular of all, the individual road race along the winding roads of the Royal National Park. Olympic security, uppermost in the minds of Olympic organisers. We felt the, um, the Barcelona presence was very overt and sort of very threatening. Um, but of course, you've got to remember Barcelona have, have terrorists. Sydney doesn't. Even so, the Olympics make a high-profile target. I think the threat would be more to infrastructure, because you can disrupt the games without hurting people. To counter it, 3,000 police dedicated to Olympic security. And of course we'd have the uh, counter-terrorist force and the army on, on standby somewhere in Sydney at a central location. The awesome foursome and canoeists of next century will compete at Penrith Lakes. The artificial course is already under construction and will be completed within two years. Shooting will be at a new firing range at Holsworthy. And equestrian sports including jumping, dressage and three-day event will be contested at a new equestrian centre at Eastern Creek. Australia excels in sports television. Racecam, developed in Australia by Channel 7, is now exported around the world. If the Games come to Sydney, we'll show the world what we can do. There'll be over 500 cameras used. They'll be of different types, what we call lipstick cameras, fitted under boats and into helmets and into all sorts of funny places to give a, an absolute armchair viewer a perfect picture of the Olympic Games. Overseas broadcasters will benefit from the time difference. Unlike Barcelona, the marathon, for instance, won't have to be run in the heat of the day to suit US primetime TV. What we're planning to do is to run the event when the marathon runners want it, which is early morning, which makes it in the um, middle of the day on the west coast of America, late afternoon on the east coast, and in prime time very much for the European marketplace. So it's worked out quite well, even though we've gone about it looking at from the athlete's point of view. The marathon starts at North Sydney Oval, crosses the Harbour Bridge, through the city, Circular Quay and the Opera House and onto Centennial Park. From there, past Darling Harbour, over the new Glebe Island Bridge to Dremoyne and onto the Olympic Stadium at Homebush Bay. Tickets in Barcelona were expensive, very expensive. Premier events, the, the opening and closing ceremonies, the top tickets, the A reserve, were $613. In Sydney, they'll be cheaper. Tickets for the opening and closing ceremonies will cost around $250.
athletics, gymnastics and swimming, around $45 for the finals and $35 for the heats. Less popular sports will be as cheap as $15 a ticket. Sydney Olympic Park will be home for gymnastics in a 15,000 seat coliseum. There'll be fencing and hockey at the state sports centre, volleyball, handball and badminton in what would be the new state showground, plus tennis, baseball and archery. Who can forget the opening and closing ceremonies at Barcelona? They were created by Aussie and one-time Sydney cider Rick Birch, who already has plans for Sydney. Favorite, but things are going to be hard-edged here. In, in Barcelona, they were softer, uh, which is to do with the light and the shape and the, the years there. Sydney, I think, will be a bit, a bit harder-edged, be a bit brighter. Um, and it'll be a bit new and brash, without, you know, without being crass, but it'll... I think it has to have the Australian spirit of partly she'll be right, it has to be a bit cheeky, but it has to be, you know, dignified, and ultimately it has to do great homage and honour to the athletes. Look at the Beijing bid. Held miles from the rest of the Olympics, but in Sydney it would be right on our doorstep. The cruising yacht club at Rushcutters Bay, 20 minutes from the Olympic Village, would be transformed into a world-class yachting centre. The races are normally held out to sea, but offshore racing makes for a very dull spectator sport. So the plan then is to change the yachting rules. So competition can be held here in Sydney Harbour. If we can bring it onto Sydney Harbour, I think the racing that you can see here will just be absolutely fantastic. We've got a wonderful venue. We've got headlands all over the place where all the public can come and watch it. And we can really bring yachting alive. Uh, some of the people that I've spoken to on the IOC are convinced that if Sydney gets the uh, Olympics, it will be the Yachting Olympics.